<clears throat> Good evening and welcome to Real Talk, where we have real conversations about business, entertainment, and lifestyle. I am your host, Angelita the Coach. This is episode nine, Mr. King Wesley. Today I am joined in the studio with actor King Wesley. Hey, King. Hey, Angelita, what's going on? Nothing much. How are you? Man, I'm good. I'm glad to be here. So, previously, guys, um, I had King on or asked him to come in and, you know, on the show. We'll just say on the show. But he was. Um, filming his movie uh called the thieves yeah and so you called in and we were able to talk but i felt like it was a rush type deal yeah and then when i had to be extra quiet on set so it was like i was whispering right you know i couldn't get like all up in your business so you know <laughs> i thought that i'm like hey we need another opportunity for you to come into the studio so people can put a face with the voice that they heard and kind of just open it up to have like a Q&A. Um, session where people can call in, ask you questions about, you know, you, your acting career, just like everything that's just going super dope for you. Man, so I appreciate this opportunity. Yay. So, okay, guys. So if you have any questions, comments, or you just want to say, hey, the king, you guys can call in at 248-838-3661. Call in. That's 248-838-3661. Three six six one. Um, don't call after nine though, because Randy gets mad if the phone starts ringing and we're not in here. We're only on from eight to nine. Um, so again, like I said, this is um, all access to King Wesley Q and A. Call in, ask questions, comments, just say hey. Um, but before we get started, um, I have to thank my sponsors. Key Virtual Professionals is a virtual assistant business that is dedicated to assisting entrepreneurs, businesses, and nonprofit organizations. Providing support in various areas of your business, such as a virtual office administration, document preparation, social media management, financial management, and event planning. These services will help your business stay on track. Schedule your free discovery call today by visiting www.keyvirtualprofessionals.com. <clears throat> Okay, so, excuse me, y'all. My sinuses are really bad, and... Um, That's that habanero whiskey. <laughs> Randy gave me a shot, or told me to take a shot of... What was it called? It. I don't remember the brand, but it's a mango habanero whiskey. Habanero. That's all I'm going to say, y'all, and it's still, it's it's still there. It's pretty stiff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit, King, but I'm not going to, we're not going to do the interview all over again that we did the first time. No, nah, they missed it. They missed it. So if you guys um, want to watch it, um, if you want to listen to it, make sure you go to uh, coachangelita.com forward slash real talk and you can listen there. Um, so we're not, we're not going to backtrack, but there are some points that I do want to touch on because I know that, um, <clears throat> You had just finished, or I'm not going to say you just finished. I think the movie Candy had just... Um, it, it had just been released. Okay. Yeah, back in, uh, what was that, uh, April? Yep, I was down in uh, Atlanta in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. That weekend of the 26th, 27th, and 28th. We actually had a, a premiere down in Atlanta. It was, it was sold out. Um, big shout out to the Isabel Brothers Again, they uh, they trusted me with their project. Um, and then we rode over to Huntsville, which is their hometown, um, and we had two uh, two premieres there. Both of those were sold out. Um, the energy was amazing. Uh, I met a lot of a lot of pe a lot of people, a lot of fans actually. That you know, I didn't know that they had seen some of my previous work. Uh -huh. So that was pretty cool. Um, met a couple of the writers and directors and producers and things of that nature. Um, yeah, that whole experience was nice. So, what was uh, what was Candy about? Candy was about um, a young lady who actually played the daughter of my character. Um, it was about a young lady who um, she was already faced with her, you know, her troubles, you know, of growing up and uh, you know things of that nature. But she also came. Um, how can I put this? She came in counter with um, some of my past, 
my character's past. Okay. And it was kind of, you know, it was bringing on some more troubles, which raised a lot of questions for her. You know, my char- uh, my daughter's character, um, she was a real in- inquisitive young girl. So she had a lot of questions. And as a parent, um, you know, we try to not hide certain things, but uh-huh. we try to shoo certain things away. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's what it was pretty much about. And uh, it's a great movie, man. I, I can't wait till those guys release that on a video stream. Okay, because that was my next thing. Like, okay, so how do how do people here in Detroit, how are we going to be able to see Candy? Uh, right now, you can go uh, log on to www.isabelbrothers.com. Okay. And they, have a, they do have a website where you can actually purchase the, the hard copy okay. of the film. Um yeah, I think it's only like $10. They'll uh, mail it out to you and whatnot. Okay, that's cool. Um, so, because, you know, sometimes I see on your on your page where you'll drop clips of the movie, and I'm like, that's all I get? Like, I'm trying to see, like, this whole movie. <laughs> and, de- you know, definitely got to draw you guys in. Yeah, you just got to, you got you just give us little clips. Okay, so speaking of clips. Okay. <laughs> Now I got to fast forward. Okay, so y'all, I'm, okay, I stay on social media, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm looking through social media yesterday, and I see, like, credits in a movie. Uh, yeah. And so at the end, I see King Wesley. That's right. But the first person that I seen was Sylvester Stallone that was in this movie. Hey, man, to that. What? <laughs> hey, look, I've got my first big credit role with one of my – one of my superheroes growing up as a kid, like right. I, I'll sit and watch binge watch all the Rocky movies. Okay, Rockies, Rockies, like, they are good. I will binge watch it, and my kids will get aggravated like that. We got to sit up and watch this. I'm like, yeah, you know. So, Classic. um, with that movie, that's actually a uh, escape plan, the Extractors. Um, they actually cut my scene out, <laughs> which was. It's okay because I still receive residual income mm-hmm. off the movie, um, but I just felt I was even more excited that my name was in, you know, in the credits with him, absolutely, Curtis Jackson, absolutely. aka Fifty, aka Fifty, aka Fitty, uh, <laughs> Dave Batista. Like these guys are some of my, you know, people that I've, I've I'm look I look up to. Of right. course, everybody knows that I'm. Uh, you know, keeping my fingers t- crossed and my shoes t- tied tight, you know, with the, you know, for mm-hmm. the opportunity to work with 50. So that, to me, that was exciting. You Absolutely. know what I mean? So I just said, hey, look, I, you didn't physically see me, but here I am. I was there. My I was pa- there. I, I was there. I spent long hours. Um, shout out to my homeboy, Tristan Fizikas, too. He uh, He's from Detroit. He's actually in that movie with me. We nice. was both in the this one particular scene, this big scene, um, they actually showed him. Nice. That was nice. cool. They actually showed him. So kind of explain that to, you know, people who are, you know, starting out as acting and, you know, getting their feet wet. Explain that to them as far as, like, your name came up in the credits, but they didn't actually show, show, your, you. show you. Okay, let me explain how all that happened. Um, what actually happened was... I it was a casting agency in Ohio by the name of Angela Boehm. Um, I had submitted for you know that role, and like I said, my homeboy is here, uh, Tristan Fizikas. He he submitted too. They actually casted him uh-huh. for that. So, but they had sent me um, another email for another another scene, which was cool. I was fine with that. So what I did was I. You know, I screenshotted that email and I post, you know, I posted it because I knew who the producers were mm-hmm. and they followed me. So I just said, you know, in the caption, I said, oh, you know what, that'd be nice. You know what I'm saying? If I can book this, you know, I wasn't directing it. I didn't add nobody. I didn't tag anybody mm-hmm. or nothing like that. Um, but three minutes after me posting it, the actual producer seen it and he inboxed me and gave me this, his uh, his company, which is uh, EFO Films. Um, the producer's name was Randall Emmett. Uh, he inboxed me and said, hey, if you want to do this scene, uh-huh. um, 
you know, call my office, talk with Tim. Tim is the president of his uh, corporation. And um, tell him I, you, you spoke with me and, you know, he's going to pull you into that scene. I mean, that was just amazing. Uh-huh. Now, Randall Emmy is also, he's also one of the producers and executive producers of probably one of your favorite shows because I know it's one of mine, which is Power. I was just getting ready to say, you was probably about to say <laughs> Power. <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was just like, it was mind blowing. So I called him. I didn't. He didn't. Uh, uh, he didn't pick up. But I was able to leave a voice message. Mm-hmm. And I, I told him who I was and everything. Um, they didn't get back w- with me right away, but they got back with me in time enough for me to go down and get fitted for that scene and you know, and go through the because um, we actually had to do some training, you mm-hmm. know, for that scene. So that was cool, and um, it, it just happened. Like you know, and I, I just know that's all guys work. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And sometimes that that happens though, where you'll have a well, someone will have a scene in a movie. Yeah, it happens all the time. You and your scene just doesn't make it, it into the movie. It happens all the time. Um, so what Randall ended, ended up doing was uh, he wound up getting my because I was I was supposed to be just an extra. Mm-hmm. So he got my contract renegotiated. Nice. You know. Which was cool. Um, I wind up getting a lot more money, you know, and in the contract it says some residuals. There you go. So <laughs> I was like, you know, it was just a big blessing, man. I, and I thank him. I, you know, I, I recently thanked him, but I had been previously thanking him for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's millions and millions of people who would, you know, definitely love to be in my shoes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Especially be with that guy, knowing what he's capable of doing you know what I mean so mm-hmm. like I said that was just nothing but guys work so I mean hey I didn't make the scene but he reassured that I you know I got paid and I'm going to continue to get paid off of it there you go that's what's up more important than being seen <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly okay so um what okay so I'm going back again, but I'm not gonna Let's look. Go. I'm not gonna give it all, but I'm gonna go back. See, y'all have to. You have to listen to the last. Um, you have to listen to episode seven. It's called Lights, Camera, Action. Episode seven, y'all. Episode seven. Um. So, wait. Wait. Wait is probably like well, you know, I've seen you act before because I've seen you act in a play. Correct. Um, when the smoke clears. Yes, when the smoke clears. Um, you're good. You're a very good actor. Cause after when the smoke clears, you know, I kind of like, you know, I kind of like, at me. yeah, I had to get you the side eye, like for real, King. Sad That's what you're doing. Me. But yeah, you know, I had to give him the side eye just because, like, his acting skills are really, really good. Um, and that's what you want to do when you're on the camera. Um, for those who are, you know, who's out, you know, who's listening, actors. The biggest thing that you want is to. You want to be as believable as possible without being caught acting on screen. Um, that's that's mm-hmm. that's what, if if the, if you're portraying a bad guy, and th- after your show, you know they come to you and they, they give you a hug and say, "Oh, you did a good job." That's pretty. That's probably not what you want to hear. Nah, you got side eye for me. I was you like, you want people to look at you <laughs> and as that character, like, man, you disgust me right now. I was like, you are not the person that I previously met. Because my fa- my favorite <laughs> my favorite character on Power. Believe it or not, until they died was Holly. She pissed me off, <laughs> like literally. And carrying moving forward, okay. Of course, everybody hates Tariq, mm-hmm. but like, I really hated Holly. I was so glad. I know where I was at when I watched her die. And <laughs> but you know what? There has been actors, though, honestly, that I don't like. Because of the role that they, they played play. in a movie, yeah. Um, one one guy, I don't know his name, but okay, remember Terminator, the the Terminator where the guy was liquid. Yeah, he, I do not like him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him in real life. Yeah, and um, there was another guy, the guy that played in um, Tyler Perry. Uh, oh, what is it? Um, uh, uh, <sighs> when they are the, the uh, when the, when the couples went on a vacation. No, oh, I don't like him either. Oh, but no, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him neither. But no, what was it? Um, uh, oh my goodness, why I'm, I'm drawing a blank. 
they lived in a mansion, and he kicked her out, and then oh, he ended he up getting. He was he when he was whooping on her, and and she uh, Medea taught her to play grit ball. Yes. Yeah. No, was that it? The, well, the guy with the he, the ball head. Yeah, I know you. Don't okay, know. yeah, yeah, him. I like he's another actor. Like I don't know his name, but if I see him, mm-mm, no, nope, I'm not watching it. I don't like him. <laughs> but yeah, some of these roles that these actors play, they really make you not like them in real life. They okay. Selling, they selling they so part. yeah, they sell their products. So you know, when I got done seeing. Um, King um, after the play, you know, I kind of gave him the side eye because, and first I, of all, he had different color hair. Yeah, <laughs> See, and, and I gave her the forewarning, like, <laughs> you guys are not going to like me at all. And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But wait, and then obviously I, I seen the movie Wait. And you know what? Don't mean to cut you off. Uh-uh, but no, go ahead. The actual, that whole different colored hair, you want to hear something funny about that? Where did that come from? It, it, it was, it was, it was my idea initially. You know, I kind of flirted with it with uh, my producer, um, Melissa Talbot. I was like, you know what? I want to do something just different. You know what I mean? Because everybody, you know, everybody recognizes me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, he can play a bad guy, or he can, you know, he can play whatever. But I wanted to, I wanted you guys not to see me at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I started watching. Uh, well, I didn't start watching. But you remember that movie uh, with Blair Underwood when he, he was the psychotic boyfriend? That's where I kind of got. Well, <laughs> you can't remember the name of it because I uh, can't. That's where uh, I kind of got the movie. For, uh, I'm trying to think now. The like, whole idea for the look just to just, just to get myself a different look. Is it look. on Netflix? No. Uh, it might be. It oh, might no. be. Okay. It might be. But that's where mm-hmm. that came from. So the week of uh, our tech week. Um, you know, I went and got you know got my hair bleached or whatever, and um, I walked into practice late, but I kind of blamed it on my birthday mm-hmm. because my birthday was the week of the play, and they were like, oh, that's fine. I told them I'd just be a little late, you know. So when I came in, I had my hood on. I was acting like I was, you know, you know, having a bad day or whatever. But our, our scene that came up where it was time to reveal my character, and um, so I just kept the hood on and uh, whatnot, and. The moment when I had to reveal myself, I pulled the hood off. Like everybody's just like, <gasps> what? You know what I mean? So it was just like a big pause. It was like a, a big pause. Everybody had to get their laughs, the jokes in. But everybody was like, wow, it worked. He he, you it worked. Yeah, you know it did. I mean? It worked. Because when you walked out, I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> Tanita had actually thought. I had uh, like put some Kool Aid in my hair. I'm like, nah, oh, just- this was real dye. <laughs> you know, how long did that last in your hair? Uh, just as fast as I dyed my hair back. Okay, you know? okay. Because <laughs> the first show, I don't know if you came to the first show. The first it was the show, first one. Yeah, yeah. I said, I, my hair was curly. Well, the next night I had cut my hair, mm. so it was back to this length that okay. I am now. So uh, I gave myself another look. Oh and wow! Like, oh man, that was they kind of liked it. That second look a little better. You know what I mean? But it was cool. It was fun, and that's and that's the joy of right. you know of being an actor and and having a career where you can just be anybody. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You can just have fun with it. You know what I mean? That's what you, that's what we do. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We get paid, you know, decent. You know, just to have fun, man. So, which describe your acting style? I don't have one. You don't have one. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have I now what what I can say is I've been typecast. Okay. And and that's fine because it's kept you know it keeps me working. I I usually get typecast for either the, the you know the bad guy, mm-hmm. the cheating husband, <laughs> uh the drug dealer, the boss. Um Well, you play a good drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that comes from uh just experience of watching people. <laughs> Not right. that I know anything right. about that. We don't know anything about that. Just watch um, it. <laughs> so, style-wise, I don't, I don't really have a style. Mm-hmm. What I do have is techniques that allow me to tap into just about anybody. Okay. And and and, um, like I say, I've been typecast, which is fine. Mm-hmm. I, I when I initially got started, I kind of got like, you know, what this is getting boring because I keep doing the same thing, same thing. But then I started to listen to my, you know, people that had my better interests, like the Melissa Talbots, the Richard Bass, um, 
you know, those two guys and Thomas Harris, shout out to Thomas Harris from over in Moolah Films, they they said, Wes, you know what? If push yourself. When everybody sits back and say that, oh man, you did a good job. Uh-huh. They like, nah, you wanna push yourself. Never get comfortable. You know what I mean? That's that's the big thing. Like I with film and I think that's why I, I continuously get booked the way that I do. Um, because I'm never content with, you know, even if I got to play the bad guy two two times in a row, uh-huh. which currently I'm doing now. Um, coming out of Code of Thieves, going into okay. The Price of Love, I play two bad guys. So in Code of Thieves, do you play a bad guy? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. out of all... And you're not going to like me in that. Oh, gee. Sorry, but it's really? no, it's nothing like me. No. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna. T- okay, so when does, so are you done filming Call of Thieves? We actually wrapped uh, three days ago. Okay, yeah. so when is that set to? Um, twenty twenty. Okay, it's either gonna be late nineteen, with, but we have, uh, I actually have one, two. I have two films lined up, um, up under the same umbrella. Um, I think it's just gonna. He said 2019, but it's. I think I feel like personally it's going to be 2020. Yeah. So out of all of the characters that you that you've played, which one do you would you say that would probably be your favorite? My favorite character actually was. It's the series that I'm a part of. Transitions, Bosco. <laughs> Bosco. I mean, is you was kind of you was kind of mean. <laughs> Bosco is a brutal dude. He's okay. a brutal, when I say brutal, he's a brutal dude. Like, he's bipolar. Wow. The only person that really can, like, control that guy is his wife. You know, and it's like, and she only can do so much. Wow. He's a brutal guy. And it's, you know, I think you've seen that scene. I did. I seen yeah, the scene. Cause I, you, you, yeah, man, I did. That, <laughs> that, you know, that scene, when I first seen it at the theaters, you, I'm gonna go back to what I said uh, a few minutes ago. You don't want to get you want to you you don't want people to see you when you're acting. Mm-hmm. So when I seen me in that character for the first time, I was blown. I said, "Whoa, wait a minute, wait, oh, this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. this dude really, he's really tapped in. You know what I'm saying? And um, because I'm my biggest critic, you know, and uh. Bosco, he's that, yeah. That that's, scene, he was something else. He was something else. And then I'm gonna say, following that is my um my character Quincy from the movie, and uh, we got to get you that movie, uh, Candy. Okay, yeah, like, I do. You're gonna you're gonna like you're gonna like Quincy because he's the complete opposite of. And see, Bosco. and see, and that's what I was thinking, and that's why I asked because when I was seeing the scene, the table scene. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, he seemed like this. This character is not like the way the character in way is not like Bosco. It's like it seemed like he was totally different. Yeah. It's like he lived like his past was that, yeah. but this is how he is now. So I'm like, okay, now this would be kind of interesting to yeah. see, you know, it's, King in this role yeah, because this this that guy Quincy, um, his uh, you'll love him because. He flirts with his past a little bit, mm-hmm. and you can see some glimpses of it. But you can, my job, like the directors wanted me to do, they wanted to show the struggle of you know, and, and that's real life. Mm-hmm. People have struggles, especially people who you know, for example, people who've been saved, mm-hmm. which is my character in that movie. He's now he's saved, just, right? And people don't realize just because you're saved. Especially when you're newly saved, you get attacked the most. So you wanna go back. they wanted me to show that struggle. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's something I could relate to. You know what I mean? So yeah. So you guys love Quincy. Yeah, I seen that. I was like, oh, this looks like this could be a different side. Now, Bosco. Okay, so now the series is called Transitions. Correct. And it is on Amazon. Correct. Um, but somewhere something's missing here. <laughs> What you mean? Some, or did I just not go? Um, did I just not watch it further enough? In that 
which the and first ev- and the first episode. Yeah, and the first seat is that like this yeah, the first it's season. season one, episode one. Season okay. That's on. That's what's on uh, Amazon Prime. And there's now. nothing else on there. No, it's just okay. that one episode. Um, I just spoke with the um, and it was crazy because I, I just switched over from the uh from Instagram to Facebook Live, mm-hmm. but the uh the actual producer, um, the writer and the creator, he just tapped in and announced that uh episode two will be out this week. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cuz you know, I'm waiting to get to that scene where Bosco went crazy in the uh, office. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's coming that's coming up. That's coming up. So it's coming you up. You see how I was like messaging you like, "Okay, so when do you come in?" Yeah, like, "Where?" It's coming up. It's coming up. Uh, did you I don't know if you, so you did you see, see uh, episode 1? I did see episode I did see episode did you see, 1. Uh, Michael Blackston. And yes. Oh, I did not know that he was <laughs> in there. I didn't know he was in there. He's, He's a, real character. a fool. He's oh a real my character. yes. He is truly um, a fool. And Juan Glover from The Wire. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Slim I was Charles. like, okay, this could be. Yeah, they actually out in L.A. right now filming with uh, um, Uncle Snoop. Oh. Yep. And then I was just on the phone with a, um, a partner of mine and Benzino yesterday. So we're gonna see if we can get that mapped out, hashed out some way. Nice, yeah. yeah. So I'm waiting on that episode where you was, you know, having he was upset. <laughs> he brought the he brought this dude in the office. You like, I got uh, all this money out here. I was he like, tri- oh my God. yeah, he was tripping. <laughs> he that. tripped out. You know, I think anybody would have spazzed out. <laughs> yeah, that's true though. You, you know, know you even if you somebody. wasn't in that type of lifestyle, and you know, mm-hmm. you walk some, you know, one of your good people walks a stranger into your right. Home. Like, oh, bro, what are you doing? But it's but it's the face. Like, I think when I when I watch people act, like I look at like their facial First expressions, expression. and I see <laughs> how like they so you know like they're so into it, and so like your facial expression, and I'm like, man, like he has facial expressions, like this could really be real, like. <laughs> I'm like, but this doesn't. This is not the king. That's not, you know. That's that not king. Not, it's not. <laughs> king is cool, man. King is laid back. Right. King is he's cool. So. <laughs> Um, how again, you know, um, so listen guys, if you're listening and you have questions and you have comments for me, call 248-838-3661. Um, you can ask them anything. I was going to say the uh, number again. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's right there. 248-838-3661. 248-838-3661. <laughs> call in. Call and ask him questions, comment. Just call and say hey. My little sister just tapped in. Tori Monet from Wait. Hey. Hey, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, call in and, you know, say hi, say hey. Just, you know, give some, some, ask some questions, some comments. You know, I think it's really good, like, when you have somebody, you know, in your community, someone like King who is, who's out here, who gives back, and who's just honestly just, like, a real down-to-earth cool guy, you know, that you can kick it with, you know. So I'm trying to, you know. Let y'all get y'all two minutes of fame before you know. Man, I appreciate it. Hey, look, <laughs> look if you needed me to come at least once a week. Hey, look, right, I'll, I'll you know, something to talk about. I'm trying to get y'all to get y'all two minutes of fame so y'all could be like, I called it on the podcast <laughs> when King used to live in Detroit. Because once he up out of here, y'all look. FYI, King is not leaving Michigan. <laughs> you just say you're not leaving, I'm not Michigan. leaving Michigan. I'm not going to Atlanta because that's what everybody do. I'm they make it going, big and they I'm leave. I'm not going to LA. All them earthquakes. All them earthquakes. I'm not. I'm staying right here. Atlanta is. There's too many people living in Atlanta. Yes, I know, right? I was. <laughs> he was thinking it. He was thinking the same thing I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. It's just too much going on yes, down in Atlanta right exactly. now. Exactly, it's just too crowded. You know, I could always I could commute. I, I buy time. I get a timeshare every <laughs> anywhere. I probably have a timeshare in 30 out of 50 states. I will do it. So, how long have you been acting? 50, 15 years. Fifteen years. Yeah. So when it when I do catch this big break, I know it's going to seem like overnight to some, but it's like it's years. going to be like a if it happened this year, it'd be a fifteen night overnight success. So, also not only with like you know you have your movies and then you have um, I've done a lot of stage too. I was yeah that's yeah. that's where I was going to um, stage play. Like obviously I met you when. Um, you did when the smoke clears, but obviously before that, like I didn't know who you were prior to that. To that. You know, so I mean, I'm sure there were so many things that you did yeah. um, stage wise. So, what were some of um, those? Shout out to Angela Dunlap. Uh, one of my bigger productions, uh, probably my biggest stage production, was with uh, Angela Dunlap. Dunlap, she's from here. 
um, and she's a national playwright. It was entitled When Men Pray. That production was dynamic. We had uh, Terrell Carter from Empire. Mm, nice. We had Tony Terry, the singer. We had Henri Franklin, Don Snipes, myself, and my homeboy Andrew uh, Calhoun. And that was based upon, we were all friends in that, in, uh, in that play who uh, was basically in like a time capsule and we were all struggling with something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My character, he struggled with, I uh, forgot the word. He was like, uh, like I couldn't read. Whatever Ill- that word. Illiterate? I got, it, it, it was another, <laughs> it was another no, word. It was another word that they were using. Um, but um, What's uh, the word, Randy? Um, you see how I just put him? He, I just put Randy all in the mix. <laughs> He can't. I am not paying attention. <laughs> oh, Randy, well, I ain't giving you the juice then. Randy, <laughs> what's another word for someone who can't read? Uh, I forgot the... Uh, illiterate is the only word see? I know. Yeah, he wasn't illiterate, but I forgot I forgot the, the word that they gave. But this character, he was uh, he was that. And, um, and he struggled because, you know, you know, it was a girl in his class that he liked when he was a kid, and he, he wound up getting older, and... She wound up getting him locked up and stuff like that. So he had to, you know, find himself and, you know, find the Lord to help find himself. Mm -hmm. So that was a big production. Um, Joe Smith, uh, I've done all his productions except this last one, um, his Christmas Christmas play. Um, Diamond Girls was his biggest production. Um, that's where I got a lot. That's where I, like my face became like real popular when I worked, started working with him, and mm-hmm. that when he did the first play, uh, <coughs> Diamond Girls, back in 2012, because he actually did it three times. Um, I've worked with T.J. Hempfield. Mm-hmm. I was one of his soldiers, and uh, I forgot that Easter play that he was the name of that. I forgot. I am not a play person, believe it I, or not. I forget. Uh, if it wasn't for Tanita, I probably my brain, my brain is. <laughs> I'd be forgetting. <laughs> but I've done over like 30 uh, something stage plays. Yeah. You know, so. That's so. That's so. And that and it's definitely helped me with film because, you know, with stage, you get one take. Mm-hmm. Film, you can cut, redo it, and, you know. And keep going back mm-hmm. and going back, and it's okay. So, speaking of that, how? Tanita said, hey. Hey. <laughs> So speaking of that, I have a question. How do you remember all those lines? God. <laughs> I just want to, you know, actually, um, I knew I had something special because I actually write music. Okay. Like, I, I write. I don't actually perform it, but I actually, like, write it, like, raps and stuff like that. Um, poetry, things of that nature, spoken word. Mm-hmm. And I can remember it. It's just... I never performed it. And that's when it, it kind of gave me the, the signal, like, hey, man, you know, your memory is something, like, unique. Right. And then I got with my um, my acting coach, Henri Franklin, and he started telling me different things as far as, like, um, you know, how I break down a scene. Mm-hmm. That actually helped, like, enhance my capability to remember those lines. Like, I already had a good memory. But when Obviously. he incorporated, like, breaking down the scene and knowing your purpose in the scene, it made it that much easier. So now it's like, it's pillow, it's like pillow talk. It's real simple. See, that's because I'm like, how do actors be I've had that? four scripts at one time. Mm. I mean, it's four different characters. And I've, like. And you've gotten it and all. It, it, they, they, I brought, I had to, sometimes I've done had to bring all of them to, you know, different rehearsals like hey man you remembering all that <laughs> they did it you know they pulled me to the side hey man you just not doing you not we ain't pushing you too hard no i'm good mm-hmm. and wow. get out there and i i just do it so it's just just one it's just a god gift man and I, I recognize it and um i'm utilizing it to the best of my ability mm-hmm. that's good thanks tanita she said and he does it good <laughs> <laughs> um what are some things you do to remain to remain relaxed and calm during an audition uh just knowing well recently i ain't gonna say it's probably like about four years ago um which is pretty recent <laughs> recently 
just knowing that the casting directors and the directors and producers and things of that nature, they know what they want. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could go in there and do, you know, every act from the Barnum and Bailey Circus. If that's not what they want, then hey. So I'm here to uh, display what I, I have. Mm-hmm. Hope I come close to what you want. And I hope what I do leave you with, you may can call me back one day, if mm-hmm. not today. So, you know, my advice to actors, um, the new actors, and even actors that's, you know, been in the game, just just know that. Like, the casting directors, they know what they want. Mm-hmm. So it's not, you know, use that nervousness, because I still get nervous. Right. Use that nervousness to trigger emotions and pull from. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Once you know how to harness that, and that's something that I teach, because um, I do one-on-one training. You know, not with everybody, but just with selected people. I teach them that, like, hey, look, I know you're nervous because I get nervous. Let me show you how to use that energy. And I don't think that's something that I'll ever, obviously, probably will never go away. You know, the nerves. No, never. Of- this is this is something that you, one thing about it, anything that you're passionate about, you, you know, you're going to get nervous about it. Mm-hmm. Because this is your, if it's your passion, if, if it doesn't move you, then it's not your passion. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't scare you. Then it's not your passion. Exactly. Yes. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um. So let me back up. So we all know King. Backing on up. <laughs> so we all know King, the actor, and you know. But who is King? Who is King Wesley? King is a real cool dad. Well, I always start that off wrong. King <laughs> is a real cool husband. There you go. I'm a real cool dad. Um, and I'm just a real down to earth person. Uh, King will tell you how it is, brutally at times, but I've I've gotten better with um, knowing. I had to understand that it's a universal language for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I've I've practiced and 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 prayed over you know using that universal language to um, build my connections, my network, things of that nature. Um, I've practiced my love language with my wife you know certain things you know that I would typically say to her uh, I can't just always just come out the gate with it I gotta understand you know not put a filter on it but it's a, it's just it's a language that you gotta use King is uh, I'm a loyal friend um, I'm a homebody I don't like big crowds crazy because of the work that I'm in but I don't really like big crowds. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I like to have fun though. You know, I like house parties and barbecues. And right, the laid back and stuff. And yeah, I like, you know, kings like the laid back things. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I love my kids. You know, I pick, I think I pick with them more than anybody in the world. I'm a prankster. I'm. Uh, I will pull a joke in a minute. Mm. <laughs> we keep that in mind, but let me keep I that am in a prankster. mind. I am. I am. Not a wankster, I'm a prankster. <laughs> I like to have fun, man. Just live life. Absolutely. You know, because it's, it's, it's a real blink, man. I, mm-hmm. You know, we got to just live it. You know, we do a lot of uh, worrying about things that we have no control over, and sometimes we forget to live. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's me. That's dope. Yeah, I would say I would have to agree. You know, it's time you have to enjoy life. You so can't. I got a question for you. Uh oh, wait a minute. This is my show. Who's <laughs> Angelita? <laughs> Tell us about Angelita. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Which one know about Angelita? Who is she? Hey, she's I, 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 she's a mom. I have. Yeah. She's a mom of four. Okay. Um, and a grandmother. Congratulations. Thank you. Um. I'm I'm really just a laid back person. I think I'd probably say they call me like the the geek. I don't watch TV. Is she much. telling the truth over here? He doesn't know. Hey, he doesn't Randy know. sees me like Randy, what? Like, I'm just here to. Do Randy, this. I'm just here to just make sure the show <laughs> just get airs. It's like I only see her twice a month. That's it. But you know, I, I'm I'm laid back. Um, you know, I think over the last couple of years, I think that I've just really just been getting to know myself, getting That's to know up. me. Um, 
I can honestly say that I found myself at 39. Hey. And I'll be 41 this year. <laughs> that's that's cool. That's you cool. know like, so. And you know what? Big kudos to you too, because most women don't tell the age, even though she doesn't look nowhere near forty one. Everybody, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank nowhere you. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and that's that's cool, man. Because I, I can I can attest to that. I've just recently found myself, and I'll be forty this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, three years ago. See, you know, and it's and it's. It, for me, it was one of those things where, you know, you have to, and I tell people this all the time, and I used to, um, I used to, the first time I heard this phrase, and I you know, thoughts become things, and I'm like, that makes, yeah. abs- you know, when I first heard it, I was like, that makes absolutely no sense. It makes a lot of sense. That it does. So, and I just think that, um, you know, you got to unlearn some things, learn some You know some what I had things. to learn today, again? What did you have to learn? I had to learn to appreciate the journey. Okay. Because sometimes we as people, we confuse the destination mm-hmm. with the journey. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you you got to know that. And so the journey is dope sometimes. The jur- no, that's All the that's time. Life. I, yeah. Yeah. Life yeah. is dope all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Like, life is dope all the time. Even in the dark. It's, it's dope because. Because you always going to pull. Even in the always, dark, you're going to pull something gonna, out. Think about it. Everything that you've been through. Everything, just think about everything that you've been through. You probably can't, right? You made it through it. Absolutely. 100% of every everything. bad thing that you yes. went through. So now yep. you can incorporate the good things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that in itself is completely just, that's something to be like, hey, you know what? This thing called life is not that bad. Mm-hmm. I don't care what happens, what get thrown my way. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make it out I'm of gonna it. Make it. That's mm-hmm. the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the journey. Um, people think of you know, the destination as like maybe a f- uh, financial place mm-hmm. or uh, or I can travel, I can do this. No, 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 no. That's not the destination. Your destination is your ancestors, reaching your ancestors. Mm-hmm. We ain't there yet. We're not there <laughs> We're yet. We're not there yet. We got to live. Yeah, we ain't there yet. And I'm yeah. not trying to push that. I, you know, I'm trying I'm to. Not. I'm I'm cool right now. Shout out to my LA people. What's up, Nate? I see you over there. <laughs> yeah, we, absolutely. We have to stay in tune with the journey and appreciate it and trust the process mm-hmm. and the journey. In the journey. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I and didn't mean to take over your. Uh, no. You know what? Hey, real talk. That's real the name talk. of the show. Is, you know. So ask questions too. You know. Yeah. Um, Make sure you guys call in at two four eight eight three eight. 3661. Yes. If you got any questions, not only for me, but for Angelita as well. Oh, y'all. I think I'd have found me a co host, y'all. We working. <laughs> we working. Hey, look, I got to be more than just an actor. You know, I got to be a, hey, a co host. Come in and come come on the show and come talk to me. Um. So, so yeah. And then I think, too, you know, as you get older, solitude is, is really nice. You Absolutely. know, uh, you Absolutely. know, you have to spend that time with yourself and, you know. The only way. If, you elevate is to isolate. Uh-huh. And God will not bless you until, drum roll, your land. We don't have a drum roll, Randy? Oh. No? Oh. <laughs> until your <laughs> clear port is clear. There your you landing go. space is clear. So just imagine that as your blessings. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He can't bless you until your runway is clear. Exactly. Clear the land. Clear the bless. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, any more questions for me, King? No, that was it. I, I just had to hit you back with what you hit me with. I know. Look, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't expecting no questions. <laughs> um, so, who is one actor? Or it doesn't even have to be one. It could be a few. Like, who would you who would you like to work with? Uh, definitely my homeboy, my ace. Uh, like, this is this is. I, I think I might get a, a little starstruck. Probably will get starstruck, and that'll be Denzel. Oh yeah, and that and that only lasts for a second because I am a Detroit player. <laughs> I am from New York, which is he, he's from New York as well. But I, I you know, I, I'm here from Detroit now, so you know we boss up. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, yeah, he gonna freeze me up for a second, but I'm like, okay, let's get it. Okay, let's get it. Yeah, uh, Denzel, I would love to work with uh, Morgan Freeman. I would love to work with Holly Berry. I would love to work with uh, Sonali. Just don't give Holly Berry no more kids. 
She keep losing them in every uh, movie. She loses. Uh, okay, I, go ahead. See, they, they stereotype her. <laughs> see, look, Randy, they, you know what I'm talking about, Randy. Even, she loses a kid. They even stereotype her. <laughs> uh, so now, Lathan, um, we have a, like, it's a, it's some new talent that's coming up. Like, mm-hmm. like some of the, some of the, some of the guys, I can't even remember their name right now because because I'm under the spotlight, but like, um, I definitely would want to work with 50. Yes. Yeah, I think working with him, I want to be on a set. I, I want to be in a scene with him. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Just to see what his, just to see what that energy is like. Um, shout out to my homeboy Joseph Sakura. Um, that's Tommy from Power. Joseph Sakura. Wow. Uh, he's 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 him and you know him and Omari is you know my they'll, those those are my guys. Nice. Uh, man, really, just about I'm you know. That's what's up. The elite. What about? Because you know, I just I, oh oh, what's her name? Uh, the 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 uh, Benjamin Button of the game, the young lady, uh, Angela Bassett. She Angela Bassett. I would love to work with her. Dope. Yes. Yes. Benjamin Button. She's not Asian. No. Way. No, she is not. <laughs> she she is not Asian. She is absolutely beautiful. Nah, yes. Absolutely beautiful. What about Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> Samuel, I love it. I mean, his energy. I think my our energy would be dynamic because he he just he's just raw. Yeah. And that's just me. I'm like raw. Like yeah. F you, F you too. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dro- we be dropping F bombs everywhere, like bro. It is what it is. Exactly. Summer, That's what I'm, yes. It, his energy, I, I could tell, it, it's amazing. But me being a forever, you know, being forever student, I would know I have to pause my student moment and really just do what I do mm-hmm. because I don't want to be. They're not gonna drown me out in the scene. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm gonna say it again. You're not gonna drown me out in the scene. <laughs> say- I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to dominate the scene myself. We're gonna. We're gonna. You know, toss that energy around um, and, and make. You know, history. You know, say what I mean? loud for the people in the back. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> you're not gonna. You, you know, we're gonna. We're gonna make th- that scene pop. You know you that movie pop. Jamie Foxx, shout out to him too. Yeah, he's a good actor like, too. Man, he's yeah. a great actor. Yes, Oscar award winning actor. Yes. You know, yes. with him and Ray. Um, like, honestly, I'm. I can go with it. I feel like I can go with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, and not just that's not putting myself on a pedestal or anything. That 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 just knows. I just know the work that I put in, mm-hmm. and I'm. I know that I'm gonna be forever a student. You know. Um, the very first stage play I did, it was a guy named Kenny Kenny uh, Boyle. This guy, he was just great, and I would soak up his energy. And I, after we got done with the first the first stage play, shout out to Kenyatta Burst for the Enemy in My House. That was the very first stage play I ever done, and he mm. was in it. I told him, I said, "Bro, you don't know how much of your energy I soaked up." You know, I don't even know if soaked up was a word, but <laughs> that's what I did. I soaked it up. <laughs> I soaked up the energy. And I told him, he's like, nah, bro. He's like, nah, for real. He's like, man, I was pulling energy from you. I'm like, Y'all hey, was pulling the energy from each other. That's just, you know, because he was just smooth with it. So I'm like, oh, I got to be smooth with it. <laughs> so, so Randy just informed me that we, we have five, five minutes. minutes left. I still got a whole bunch of questions, y'all. Okay, so look. Okay, let me let that me. That means it's gonna be a part three. Let me. Okay, <laughs> look. I told you. Look, anything that's going on with King, y'all gonna hear it right here. Okay, exclusively. I, yes, I'm trying to get like a seg a segment here for like our Detroit actors and actresses. We are gonna call it the King Wesley segment where they come in and talk and all of that good stuff. So I'm I'm about to put that in the works. It's gonna be the King we Wesley working, segment. We working. We working. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work as a co-host too. So okay. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, we, we gonna work it out. out. We gonna work it out. <laughs> okay. So really quick, what are your movie now? What's what are you working on now? What's currently? I, I just wrapped up Code of Thieves with uh, director B Z Jones. Um, coming up next, we have uh, Price of Love, which is executive produced by Drum Roll, Detroit's own Detroit Icewear Vezo. He's producing this. Uh, it was written by Kamal Smith. Excuse me. Um, it's going to be uh, directed by uh, director BZ Jones. Um, and then following up after that, I have what you could call Insta Famous. And I and that's gonna be slap happy comedy. Oh, uh, wow. yeah, it's gonna be a comedy. <laughs> um, shout out! Oh, I got Flint Tail on the way. Shout out, my uh, oh my yeah, boy. I seen that. Yeah, that that's was, big. Oh 
yeah. Flint Tail is on the way. My my boss just tapped in. Mark Case, he's from Detroit. He's okay. a Hollywood. Now he's from Detroit, but now he's a Hollywood movie uh, director. Just so they know, like I am like uh, yeah. King's exclusive um, yeah. interviewer. So make sure y'all remember this face. Yeah. Wherever he at, y'all got to fly me out to. Like <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, shout out to Mark Case with Flint Tail. We got uh, Sasha Lane's coming. See, I'm glad he popped in because now I got movies with That's him that I, is yeah, just really. Yeah, because that was another one. I'm like, there's yeah, something and else I just, I'm supposed I, to be I was asking just, you about. I was just on the set with the yeah, mayor. A flint. Yeah, yep, I seen it's that. It's crazy. It's just. That's going to be a part three of this interview. Yes, everybody. of course. There's going to be a part three. <laughs> yes, there is. Um, okay, so this is one question that I, I wanted to ask you: If you could assemble your own cast and crew for a project, who would that consist of? I'm gonna answer that in part three. Oh, because um, I th- that's putting together a whole team. Oh. Like I, I know people um, specialize with DP work, which is director of photography, uh, certain directors, certain assistant directors, certain writers. Uh-huh. Then you know we got to focus on the actors and things of that nature. It's, it's a lot more than just okay. That just goes saying, on. okay. Yeah. So let's let's say that question for okay. uh, episode. Three. I got you. Yeah. I got but you. But if we can get one more in, okay. Let me cool. see what I'm gonna go ask you. Let's see. Mm, mm, mm. I was, you know, I always ask everyone this, and I already know the answer to it. But I like to still ask. Um, would you consider yourself successful? Definitely. Definitely. I'm doing. I'm. I'm living a dream. And it's getting me. It, it's gotten me here with you. This is this is a success. This is an opportunity. Opportunity presents success. Absolutely. You know what I mean. So I every opportunity that I get is you know most people look at success as you it's know money. A money. Yep. No, it's it's an opportunity to be on a platform that you wouldn't normally be on. Mm-hmm. So, Randy, I appreciate you. Randy, are you telling me like my time is up? Yeah. <laughs> my time is up, you guys. So you know that there will definitely be part three. Part three. Um, as you can see, nobody else can come in the studio when we talk. It's just you and I because we have so much to discuss. Um, so how can people connect with you on social media? Uh, you can uh, on Instagram. That's at I am King Wesley. That's I A M K I K I N G W E S L E Y, and on Facebook. It's King Wesley. Page I have one, two, three. A, yeah, it's <laughs> three pages. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's King Wesley. King Wesley. That's K I N G W E S L E Y. Then it's King Page Two Wesley. Then it's Wesley Page Three King. Okay, you need a whole. You just need a page. I just need a whole PR. Like yeah. I be trying to juggle all that. Yeah, it's hard. yeah. We'll talk. We go. We gonna talk about that too. Yeah, yep, I got you. Okay, so thank you all so much for tuning in to uh, Real Talk with Angelita. Um, my guest was King Wesley. We are definitely coming back for uh, a part three to this, and I will see you guys in two weeks. <laughs>